uh, call this area home. And to uh, start out the memorial, I'd like to uh, welcome the Reverend uh,
bad restitution and compensation. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, peers, constituents. My name is Paul Dang, and uh, I thank you for. Uh, I would like to thank you for allowing me to speak today on behalf of Asian Americans for Change. We are here today to honor the 11 lives taken and countless coastal residents affected by the Deepwater Horizon explosion and oil spill. This devastating. Devastating events have caused extensive damage to our community, wildlife habitats, and fishing and tourism industry. As a victim of this tragedy, myself, I still cannot believe it has been two years since that day. I remember the incidents as it just happened yesterday. I still see images of the incidents that has. I still see the image of people crying for their beloved family members who have lost their life in the explosion. And I still vividly recall the distressing look of them fishermen faces who jobs and main income have lost. We'll reflect on this disaster. Let us not forget lives that were lost, those who suffered the ultimate sacrifice. Let us remember their families and friends as well. We need to honor this individual by moving forward as a united community and by making things right. We must not let those who are responsible forget the pain that our community has felt. We must make our voice heard and hold them accountable. Today's event must the beginning of Gulf's future and commitment to a uni unified action plan for a healthier Gulf Coast. We must ensure that our community will be a safer place to live, work for generations to come. No doubt. That we have come a long way, but we still have far to go. Let us continue the fight to make Mississippi Gulf Coast a better, more beautiful place. Thank you. Uh, so, I guess I'll introduce myself. I'm uh, Raleigh Koch uh, with the Gulf Restoration Network. Um, Today, we're releasing a progress report outlining how far BP and the government have come in accomplishing the goals of the Gulf Future Action Plan uh, developed by affected communities after the BP disaster. It's not too late to restore and protect the Gulf in the wake of this disaster, but progress by BP and the government towards recovery in the wake of this in the Gulf remains unacceptable. We have a long way to go to restore both the environment and the Gulf community. From oil and plankton to dead sea turtles, it's clear that the BP oil disaster is continuing to have a big impact on the health of the Gulf's ecosystem. Um, a key food source in bait fish, the Gulf killifish, has been shown to have gill damage and other impacts due to low-level exposure. Recent studies have also shown that deepwater corals impacted by the BP disaster are dead or dying, and our beaches are intermittently laced with tar balls that contain bacteria that cause illness uh, and even death in humans. Even Governor Bryant has pointed out that he's just not buying BP's assertion that 98% of Mississippi's coast has been cleaned up. These impacts could be just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to ecosystem-wide damage, as occurred with the herring fishery in Alaska four years after the Valdez spill. BP must be required to fund long-term monitoring of impacts and their effects on this productive and economically valuable ecosystem. Additionally, the Natural Resource Damage Assessment, or NERDA trustees, who are tasked with holding BP accountable to undo the damage from this massive disaster, must not rush to settlement. If they settle, they need to ensure 
that any settlement can be reopened in order to hold BP liable for any additional damage and impacts that are later discovered. Finally, Congress must come together to ensure that Clean Water Act fines arising from the BP drilling disaster come back to the Gulf to fund environmental and community restoration. It's only fair that the significant resources from these fines, potentially as much as $20 billion, come back to the region that has suffered from the injury that has been the nation's energy sacrifice zone for decades. The Clean Water Act fines will help jumpstart long-needed restoration efforts. In short, BP must be required to ensure that the Gulf and its communities depend upon the health of the Gulf and their culture and livelihoods are restored and protected. So thank you, and I'd like to introduce uh, Louis Miller with the Sierra Club. appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'd like to, to uh, talk about a specific piece of accountability that is yet to be addressed by any of our local, state, or federal officials, and that's what they call a regional citizen advisory council. Uh, as you've heard this morning, too many lessons have been learned over the past two years since this tragedy began. By far, one of the most important lessons to remember is the reason why we're here today. The fact that this disaster was caused by the negligence and greed of British Petroleum in an industry that prioritizes profits over the health, safety, and welfare of the Gulf Coastal communities, rig workers, our lands, and our waters. While the BP oil disaster stands as the worst environmental catastrophe in our nation's history, it's no secret that the oil and gas industry has a terrible record in the Gulf. As the Presidential National Oil Spill Commission reported last year, the problems that led to the disaster weren't unique to BP, but rather were systemic throughout the entire industry. What's more, other federal investigations have found that BP, Transocean, and Halliburton violated federal offshore safety regulations in favor of cost-cutting and time-saving measures that led to the blowout. And while the blowout dumped 4.9 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico, since April 2010 there have been over 4,000 additional oil spills in the Gulf. 4,000. And that is according to the reports filed with the National Response Center. It's outrageous and it's completely unacceptable that BP and the industry have been allowed to return to business as usual in the Gulf while the voices of citizens in the Gulf continue to be sidelined in, or marginalized in the recovery process. Today, citizens throughout the Gulf Coast still have no confidence that BP will live up to its promise to make it right or that the oil and gas industry is safer or better prepared to respond to another oil disaster and that our government regulators are doing a better job at protecting the public interest over those of the industry. Gulf communities have more than earned the right to hold BP, industry, and regulators accountable for their actions. A Gulf of Mexico Regional Citizen Advisory Council comprised of community members and leaders from the region must be created to ensure that a disaster of this magnitude never happens again. Within a year of the Alaskan Exxon Valdez oil spill, Congress established and funded an RCAC to provide a voice for communities affected by oil industry activities in their region. By fighting complacency and maintaining vigilance, the Council in Alaska has proved to be one of the most important tools in making oil industry activities safer while preparing the region to better respond to any oil spills. Unfortunately, a Gulf of Mexico regional committee has yet to become a reality. It's not a matter of if, but when, Gulf communities will be faced with another disastrous spill or blowout. The Gulf Future Coalition calls on our state, local, and national leaders to recognize this important lesson to create and fund an RCAC that give the Gulf citizens a strong voice to protect the region from future oil disasters and ensure a healthy, vibrant future for all its citizens. Uh, also in your packet, 
Uh, if those of you who got a packet, if you don't, I'll be happy to provide you with one. This is from the web page of the Prince William Sound Regional Citizen Advisory Committee uh, that is functioning in Alaska to provide oversight and accountability for uh, the Alaska Pipeline and Exxon uh, and the other oil industries that are at work in the Arctic. And I have to say this has been a, a model piece of legislation, a model settlement in the BP or in the uh, Exxon Valdez, and I think it's something the coast needs to incorporate sooner than later. Thank you. So that's the end of our formal program. If you want to talk to any of the individual speakers or any of the folks in the crowd, we'll be uh, hanging out for a little while uh, to do interviews or anything else. So, thanks. Thanks, y'all, for coming out.